near Bracknell in Berkshire, the home of a great-granddaughter of one of our greatest astronomers, Sir William Herschel. His discovery of the planet Uranus in 1781 is even more remarkable when you consider his primitive equipment. This is one of his earliest telescopes, a quaint little device with a mere six and a half inch aperture. Two of Sir William's descendants showed us the model of this much more sophisticated 40-footer which he made in 1786. At that time, Sir William could rightly claim I have looked further into space than ever human being did before me. But Herschel's view of the heavens was little more than a step across the threshold. Today, the astronomer explores space on a megacycle. A radio telescope ten times more powerful than anything yet built is to be constructed at Cambridge. A team of astronomers led by Professor Sir Martin Ryle will use it to continue their investigations of such phenomena as quasars and pulsars. These emit such powerful radio signals, they obviously have energy sources as yet unknown to us. Quasars were discovered on this telescope with two reflectors, which has a resolution of one mile. It's the largest in the world. Now the new plan is to build eight dish aerials along a stretch of disused railway line. They'll provide the same effect as a single reflector three miles wide. As every schoolboy knows, optical telescopes receive light, radio telescopes receive radio waves and focus them onto a receiver. Boys at Highbury Grove Technical School in London, not to be outdone by Cambridge, have built their own radio telescope. The Cambridge One Mile Telescope can look back in time about 8,000 million years. The Highbury Telescope is more a matter of looking forward, an extension of learning, for a group of teenagers who've already acquired knowledge that would have left Sir William Herschel starry-eyed. I know it's one of our staple